Good morning, um, I'm Helena Jambo. I work at the TU Dresden and I am a specialist for data visualization in the scientific environment. So welcome to unit one. We will discuss today which visualization type you can, you should and will use for your data. So first of all, if you look in the World Wide Web for uh, guides on choosing visualizations, you'll quickly find that there are numerous and numerous different visualization types or chart types or plot types, uh, whichever um, terminology you prefer. Um, but the very first thing that you need to know before making a decision on how to visualize your data is to know what you're actually aiming to visualize. So before choosing the display type, you need to know what is your data. So let's go through a couple of different uh, data types to familiarize yourself with this. First of all, your data could be text that is usually display shown in, for example, tables. Your data could also be images or films or drawings. Um, for that, we will have a separate lecture on discussing them. Um, in 99% of the cases, probably if you are a scientist, your data actually are numbers. Um, numbers that you observed over time, uh, where you observed quantities per category, where you observed relationships, genealogies, or whatnot. So once you figure out what kind of data type you have, you can go to the second step um, and assessing, do I really need a visualization? Not all data needs to be visualized at all. So here we see one example from a um, German uh, daily newspaper, the Deutsche Zeitung. Um, and what we can see here is a little thing called a pie chart, which is decorated with a couple of icons. And the only purpose of it, it says 70%, which is the number of Germans regularly drinking alcohol. So um, as an alternative to making a fairly large visualization, what you could also do is to simply say 70% of Germans drink regularly in a sentence. Uh, so for that kind of one number, not one number observation, you typically do not need a visualization in the first place. Um, now, in all other cases, you probably will have to make the choice. So if you um, want to make an informed choice of which chart type actually fits to your data, um, there are um, helpful cheat sheets such as this from uh, Abella that you can find on the web and also in the downloads below. And um, that gives you a quick overview of where you can go. So in each of the cases, you need to again think what kind of data you have. And depending on the data type, you can go into different directions of this cheat sheet. If you have, for example, time course data, there are different kinds of line plots that you can choose from or radio plots. If you have categorical data, this is where you'll find the um, typical area charts, such as by pie chart, some kind of bar charts, uh, more bar charts here, etc. And then very often you find that you're actually observing distributions uh, where uh, you have more than one observation per data point. Um, Depending on um, on your need, we will now go through the four, what I consider to be the main categories of visualization types that you will need during a PhD, for example. So the first one is um, relationships. If you want to sum, say A is bigger than B or A controls B, or if you have a network or hierarchies. Um, the second most uh, common one are um, that you have categorical data. So for example, you have uh, a bin called A and a bin called B, and you simply observe how many items fall into, into the category A and how many items fall into category B. That also applies for percentages. Um, the next uh, visually, the next data type that you often have is that you observe change. 
So you observe how Y increases or decreases um, in relation to a factor X. So you observe, for example, the rainfall over, the, over a year. And the last uh, is distributions. So here, what you actually observe, as I already said, is um, two, uh, two, two observations for one data point. So how is X changing in relation to Y or maybe even in relation to Z? So um, let's start with relationships, which is the most easiest of them. All you need to do for visualization relationships is to apply text and maybe images and arrows. That's all you need. And we see this very often, for example, in phylogenetic diagrams, in genealogy charts, so in medicine where you maybe track a disease over several generations of a family, or in kind of hierarchical network diagrams, in this case in, from, a biology back, from a biology example, um, but obviously also um, underground maps are relationship diagrams. So these are fairly simple one, but uh, obviously you can also have a lot of data that you want to put into a relationship chart. Um, this is all, always possible. And uh, here are three examples where that works rather well. In the first case, um, here we see a phylogenetic diagram that doesn't just display 10 or 20 type different species, but instead shows all of the species that we have on Earth. In the next chart, we have a relationship diagram that makes connections ac across different categories and shows how they are linked. For example, that there is a big linkage of these two categories. And here on the right, we have something that is often used in traffic <laughs> or electric diagrams, or in this case, a biochemical pathway. So because where you have to visualize numerous, numerous nodes. So, um, the next category that we want to dis that well, that we're discussing now is categorical data. So here we want to encode a quantity somehow visually. There are three um, possibilities that we usually have. First is that we can encode the quantity by length, as it's the case in the uppermost uh, part, uh, example here. So what we see here is the vertical bar chart. Is the horizontal bar chart works exactly the same way. An alternative is that we um, encode the, um, the quantity not in the length of a bar, but actually in the area of a circle or bubble. So in this case, um, it, it, the quantity is displayed by the area of the bubble. And that uh, is much harder to see visually than the length. A third possibility is that we do not encode the quantity in, in a length or an area, but simply in the tone of a color. So the saturation of blue is varied in this example based on the quantity encoded. And you can already see here in these examples that there are some, uh, that the length is really good for making precise comparisons across uh, categories, while the um, Colored, uh, color saturation is really good to get an overview in very, very little space. So here you save space, but you lose precision. Here you have a lot of precision. You can basically use a ruler and read off the exact value very precisely, but you um, have difficulties with space very quickly. So in the lengths, you can see when you encode categories by lengths, you can see that to find the most and the least category is super, super easy, while it's very hard for a, a bubble chart and almost impossible for most people in, in, if you if in encoded by color. Um, so let's now uh, have a look at a second really, really common uh, visualization type for categorical data that is uh, used very frequently, and that's a pie chart. So the pie chart encodes, um, uh, encodes the quantity by area, but not by area of circle, but by area of a sort of um, slice of a pie. Uh, the pie chart is only used if you have percentages. So
so you always show parts of a whole. Um, so in this example, maybe make a quick note uh, on your with a pen, on a piece of paper, whether you think A or B is bigger, or in fact they are the same size. So most people actually spend quite a bit of time figuring this out. And usually when I make this exercise in a class, about half the people say A is bigger and the other half of the people say A and B are the same size. And uh, pretty much no one thinks B is bigger. That's usually the outcome. So, um, and this takes actually quite a long time and people have different strategies for figuring this out. One is uh, some people read off the um, angle of the different slices and compare them. Some people just uh, squint their eyes and sort of make a guess of the area of the total area of, of the piece A versus piece B. And some people actually read the lengths of the um, circumference of that part of the slice. So if I show the exact same data in a bar chart, as we can see here, it is at the very first glance uh, visible to everyone that A in fact is the biggest of all of the categories shown in the pie chart. So always make that kind of test with, with uh, if you have uh, quantities of data, try to see with which kind of visualization uh, the message actually gets across best since age eight or nine. So a couple of instances when pie, pie charts are working fine is for example, one here. If you want to get a quick overview of a lot of different compositions, uh, such as in this example, you can quickly get an idea of what is most common and predominant in which category, in, in which example. Also, very often um, pie charts are used uh, when, uh, when they are called upon by tradition. So in Germany, the election results are typically uh, presented with a pie chart and uh, that really helps you to see the majority, which two parties combined or which three or four parties combined could actually have a majority in parliament. Uh, for that, you always want to see which one uh, is more than half, which combination gives you more than half. So when tradition dictates to use a pie chart, try to uh, go along with it. Um, to make an informed decision of how many categories you can truthfully represent in a pie chart, I refer to you to this, this diagram from uh, Flowing Data, where, you, where they visualize that um, for two slices the pie chart works really well. You can see quickly which one is bigger or if they're the same. For four slices it's still functionally very well. And as soon as we go beyond eight, uh, eight slices, it becomes absolutely impossible to get an idea of the precise quantities or percentages uh, shown in a pie chart. So we uh, summarize, if you have categorical data, you need to make an informed choice of which uh, encoding length or area or color is really useful in your case.